J.M. in the A.M. Light comes from uh, Avremo. That's Avram Fried, Arye Kunstler before that. Rocking our morning here at Bruria High School as we get set to uh, meet and greet a whole bunch of folks today. I was already warned by uh, Rabbi Hagler that there's a very enthusiastic student body that's going to be visiting us during the 8 o'clock hour, as you would suspect, here at Bruria. I also had the opportunity this morning already to speak to Rabbi Tights, who was uh, reliving some amazing memories with me of uh, some some people who um, were key to the beginning of JEC and the Berea High School, and uh, we were uh, reminiscing about the quote-unquote good old days. The uh, Jewish Educational Center's 73rd annual dinner happens on Monday night, June the 3rd. We hope to be there and celebrate with everybody at JEC at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey. The dinner will begin at 6 p.m. and will feature a keynote speaker by Chaim Wasserman, many distinguished honorees, which we'll discuss later on in this program. You can go to uh, thejec.org for information, thejec.org for information. And of course, uh, that night, one of the focuses will be the Bruria <coughs> High School 50th anniversary celebration, the kickoff of the golden anniversary. That's what brings us here today. A big thank you to Adina Abramoff, who has been working very hard both here and with our staff uh, to plan this morning. Everyone thinks you could show up and just do a three-hour radio show from anywhere. It takes planning, it takes initiative, it takes creativity, and thank God Adina Abramoff has all of those and is uh, coordinating things on the Berea end this morning. I'm sure we'll have a chance to speak with her later on. JM in the AM, we are from Berea High School this morning in Elizabeth, New Jersey, as we have hit the road yet again for another wonderful live radio show. Listen on the radio, make sure to be tuned in. On the web stream at jmtheam.org, there is a Ustream link where you can actually watch what's happening here today. I assume you could see me right now if you're tuned into Ustream. Uh, you go to ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. Again, ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. You can see what's happening. If you're a brewery student, you can log on right now and see what's happening in your ballroom before you even get here this morning. How do you like that? An amazing system, this whole internet thing. Uh, so you can log on and check that out and see the actual uh, a show as it's going on this morning, whether you're in the building or not. JM in the AM with many special guests coming up. And again, circle the date of June the 3rd. We'll be talking about the 73rd annual dinner for the Jewish Educational Center. And uh, this comes from, where are we here? This comes from Ohad Moskowitz. <laughs> Shall <laughs> Malchus, 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 Malchus,
want to welcome uh, JM and the AM legend Mayor Fertig, who's here. Yeah, that's right. We've designated him as a legend now. I didn't say the legendary. I said JM the AM legend Mayor Fertig. Thank you, Mayor, for being here this morning. And uh, he is, he's on his way to work. And um, a brewery was a stop for him this morning on the way to work. Uh, JM and the AM, for those of you who are just tuning in, guess what? We're at Brewery High School in Elizabeth, New Jersey. You're all invited to come on down and say hi. We'll meet staff, students, and members of the administration coming up. I thank the wonderful support staff here for helping uh, get us ready this morning. ZK tells me, our chief engineer tells me he could not have done it without them. That's what he says, could not have done it without them. So thank you very much to everybody. Um, those of you who want to see this radio program, I know that sounds funny, actually see a radio broadcast, you could do it right now. Uh, go to ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. Big thank you going out this morning to One Stop Kosher in Elizabeth, New Jersey. A truly one-stop market for grocery, meat, fish, takeout, bakery items, fruit, vegetables, even as an excellent sit-down restaurant, which they call Glot Star, specializing in grilled meats and sushi. They specialize in catering for all occasions, and today's breakfast is in fact sponsored by Pinchas Kassirer, the owner of One Stop and Glot Star. So next time you're on your way uh, to or from Newark Airport, if you're going through Elizabeth, New Jersey, make your one stop at one, where's the camera, at one stop. You like that, huh? 73rd annual dinner for JEC comes up on June the 3rd. We hope to be there celebrating with them at the Venetian. Uh, one of the focuses that night. And our focus today is the celebration of Brewery High School's 50th anniversary, their golden anniversary. And we'll talk plenty more about that coming up right here at JM in the AM. Keep it here, folks, on your radio dial at 91.1 FM and all our affiliates on the stream at jmnam.org. And again, you can see what's happening here in the Brewery High School ballroom and the smiling faces of an amazing staff and great people who are gathering here this morning between now and 9 a.m. Go to ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net.
J.M. in the A.M. with Baruch Levine. Good morning, everybody. We are at Breweria High School. If you're watching on Ustream, let me explain what's going on behind me. We have our Nahum Siegel Network and J.M. the A.M. signs, but right in the middle, smack in the middle of these signs, there are about 412 awards and recognitions and plaques and the different things. If you're watching now, I'm pointing to them. We're actually just guiding you as to how to see them. Uh, right behind me, different things that the uh, Breweria High School staff and students have accomplished over the last 50 years. And this is just one good example of being at a uh, veteran educational institution that all the way until its 50th anniversary continues to be at the top of its game. We're here today as we're celebrating 50 years at Breweria. I want to thank Adina Abramoff, who is here and has coordinated things on, uh, on the uh, Breweria end for us. In fact, yesterday, I am told, there was a very special day at JEC. Uh, a uh, naturalization ceremony, for those of you who don't know what that is, when people want to become, when immigrants want to become citizens of the United States, they go through a naturalization ceremony. As Rabbi Hagler, who's sitting next to me, can vouch for. Good morning, Rabbi Hagler. Good morning. Were you at the ceremony? I was. It was unbelievable. The event was run in conjunction with the United States Department of Homeland Security, Citizenship and Immigration Service, featured somewhere between 25 to 30 immigrants, and happened right here at the JEC school. Uh, the eighth grade students were paired up with recent immigrants. They studied the process of the experience, conducted extensive interviews with them. Many of the immigrants live in this area. And uh, from what I'm told, it was quite a ceremony. Adina, could you join us for a moment and tell us about uh, what happened yesterday? We say good morning to Adina Abramoff, who is here. And it, it's funny because this event actually had a uh, an impact on when we would visit Burria High School, this event that happened yesterday, and we ended up, thank God, being here today. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right, tell me about yesterday, how it went, and the impact you think it had on the students. Well, first of all, I think it's something that none of us will ever forget. It was. It I don't was, think any other school has ever done it. <laughs> that's true. We were the first um, in the state of New Jersey, the first grade school that ever brought you brought the idea to the government. Um, they've done it at colleges in the past. The way it came about, I'll tell you quickly this, yeah. uh, how actually um, we thought of this idea. My son was studying for his civics. He's in eighth grade at RTMA. That, that's the boys' uh, middle school right. for JEC. And we were going through the 100 questions of citizenship that you have to study in order to become a citizen. And all of a sudden, I remembered. I'm from Canada originally. And about 10, 12 years ago, I worked for a chain of schools. Shout out to all my Canadian friends yeah. at Associated Hebrew Schools in, in Toronto. <laughs> and they hosted a citizenship ceremony um, with the Canadian government. Nothing like our program. It was really just where they uh, gave their space. And they hosted it there, and there was a judge that they brought in. It wasn't a full program like ours was, but all of a sudden I remembered, what, yeah, and I thought, well, I wonder if we can do that here. And obviously my function at JEC is public relations marketing, and I'm thinking, well, this would, first of all, be an excellent public relations opportunity. And um, we just we took it through the channels. The teachers were interested. The principals were interested. And uh, then it was a matter of getting the government, and they were, they were on board. It was a, it was a process, obviously, because it's, it's government, but um, they were very excited. The, there were 30 citizens in the end that were sworn in yesterday right. representing 16 different countries. Um, you can actually, through our JEC website, you could actually see the Ustream live video that was shot then as well. Um, and I thought it was a great event. Rabbi Hagler, could you uh, tell the, uh, if the students appreciated the enthusiasm that the immigrants had when they became citizens of the United States? Very much so. We had uh, one group of uh, our students who went over there, a bunch of 10th graders, and when we were coming back, they were just talking about how amazing it was and how special it was to see something. I think the word they used was, that was really cool. <laughs> they, uh, they, like many of us, may take their citizenship for granted. The right. fact that they're natives uh, here in the United States and born in the U.S. And uh, obviously they get a different perspective through a program like this. This is what was happening yesterday at the JEC schools. And uh, we say mazel tov to all the immigrants who utilize your facility to become citizens of the United States. Great idea, Dina. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. I'll tell you one really interesting yeah, sure. thing was, um, was when the president of Kane University, when he started his address to them, he said to them, okay, now there are two things you have to do tomorrow morning. One, go get an American passport. Right. Two, go register to vote because that's something you probably couldn't do in your previous country. That's for sure. That, that is one thing. They talk about taking things for granted. New immigrants don't take that for granted. They usually do go immediately to register to vote and make their voice heard. Uh, so that's what was happening yesterday here as um, uh, another unique program was instituted 
at the Jewish Educational Center. JM in the AM at 14 minutes before 7 o'clock. Already some students, it seems, are drifting into the uh, Brewery High School ballroom. We'll meet... Yeah. Uh, some of our Muncie uh, crew has uh, arrived. This early? This early. From Rockland County? Uh, yep. Wow. I hope they were listening to 91.9 on their way down in Rockland County, listening to JM in the AM. Do they have to switch as they get closer? I here? would guess they have to, but you know, it's worth the effort when it comes That's to JM in the AM. You know what I mean? I'm telling you this morning, I, I mentioned <laughs> that, that I got here, I came here before 6 o'clock. It's the first time I ever got into my car in the morning and couldn't turn on JM in the AM. Reminiscent of the person who said to me, you don't know what it's like to wake up to your show. And I said, you're right. I don't know what it's like <laughs> to wake up to my show. Uh, all right. So here we are. Uh, we're still before 7 a.m. Plenty of people coming up, special guests. And, of course, we'll talk about the big event. You'll be there on the 3rd of June? Me, certainly. Bezrat Hashem? Yep, Bezrat Hashem. Because on the 3rd of June, it's not only a dinner, which will honor some great people, and there are some wonderful people who are being honored that night. It's a great dinner for JEC, their 73rd annual dinner, which will celebrate Berea High School's 50th anniversary. Is there anybody in this building today who was in Berea High School the first day 50 years ago? Maybe Rabbi Tights, who was yeah, here earlier. That's, that's correct. Possible, that he was here on the first day. And we officially began in 62, 63, 64. Do we know the exact school year where things kicked off? We'll find that out and let people know because there may be people out there in the very first graduating class. I'm sure we'll hear from somebody Absolutely. who's in the first graduating class at Berea. In fact, I wonder who's – is anybody officially accepting this or acknowledging this recognition on the 50th anniversary? Because – I would guess you would choose somebody who was part of those early back in. Sure. Um, we actually do have representatives from the very first graduating class there who will be there, and there will be a special presentation. So if any of you are listening that are at, you know, from the first graduating class or any of the early classes, we urge you to come. There will be many reunions happening throughout the evening, um, really representing all of the decades of Berea, and especially that first graduating class. Is there a yearbook from the first graduating class? Do we know if that um, exists? There, there is. In those days, though, they shared it together with the boys. Ah. It was one school. And they, it was a combined, and, and they'll, they'll be on display. So there you go. All right, so that should be very interesting, and I'm sure very emotional for a lot of people. Uh, the 73rd annual dinner comes up on June 3rd. Everyone is encouraged to get information, especially if you are a graduate, as Brewery will be cited for 50 years. TheJEC.org has all the information. TheJEC.org for all the dinner Information. We continue JM and the AM celebrating with Breweria High School on a Wednesday in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Keep it at 91.1 FM, jmandtheam.org. And, of course, you can watch all these proceedings. Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. And I am told that if you go to the social stream area on the right side of the page on Ustream, you can actually comment on the show. So I, hopefully I look uh, chipper and dapper this morning, so I want to make sure those comments our favorable ones. So you can check that out at Ustream right now. This is JM in the AM. Oh, Rav, Simcha, 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 Oh, Rav,
JM in the AM. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we'll have our news from Israel coming up at the top of the hour. See, it's already running in the background, the news from Israel. You hear that, ZK? Unbelievable. I don't know how we do it. You're wondering what that noise was, huh? <laughs> so we'll do our news from Israel coming up. I want to wish a mazel tov to those who are being honored today at the Amuna Luncheon. The Amuna of America Spring Luncheon is taking place at Hotel Pennsylvania later on this uh, afternoon, actually. Uh, a mazel tov going out to uh, Dr. Merrill Tisch and Miriam Arand and Debbie Davidman and Vicki Harari and Miriam Morgenstern and Felicia Zwebner. They're all being cited for their uh, commitment to Amuna at 12 noon today at the Big Spring Luncheon. Mazel tov from all of us here at JMNAM. Also, I wanted to uh, remind everybody in the five towns and greater South Shore area that the Friends of the IDF have their second annual community event coming up to benefit the soldiers of the IDF. This coming uh, Wednesday, today, May 22nd, with a buffet dinner beginning at 7 p.m. Ben Brofman is serving as Master of Ceremonies. You are all invited to attend. It's at the Sephardic Temple on Branch Boulevard in Cedarhurst. Go to the FIDF website for information. Friends of the IDF website for information regarding tonight's event. Also want to wish a mazel tov. We're in New Jersey, and uh, tonight in New Jersey, the Lefkowitz and Elbaum families are going to be celebrating Simcha Lefkowitz and Miri Elbaum are being married this evening. A special Mazel Tov going out to the Lefkowitz family. I mentioned uh, Shimon and the uh, family yesterday, who are Baruch Hashem going through an amazing Simcha season. Uh, to the Lefkowitz and Elbaum families on tonight's big Mazel Tov, we say Mazel Tov from all of us here at JMM. And again, that goes out to Simcha and Miri, and we congratulate them. We're live at Berea High School. We're going to meet some of the great people at Berea coming up. Here at JM in the AM, a reminder that, uh, as we've been mentioning uh, throughout the week, that June the 3rd at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey, JEC celebrates its 73rd annual dinner. And that night, in addition to some great honorees, uh, Berea High School itself is an honoree as they will celebrate 50 years of uh, Berea. And uh, we'll introduce that night some of the uh, alumna of the uh, very first graduating class uh, Rabbi Teitz uh, earlier was telling me off the air about the early days of uh, Bruria and how the uh, decision to open uh, the girls' high school uh, came about. And here we are 50 years later, and they are at the top of their game. Information about the dinner, thejec.org. Again, that's thejec.org. A reminder, you could watch us on Ustream. Those of you who've been curious what a radio program looks like, and if you're not in our studio audience today here at Bruria, like some of the great people in front of me are, uh, you can actually go to your computer and watch this as it happens. Go to ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel net. And if you go to the social stream area on that page, you'll be able to uh, actually comment on the show as it occurs. It is America's one and only Jewish moments in the morning radio program. Heard on listeners sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 on the FM dial. And a special welcome to those from Rockland County. And around the world on the web at jmtheam.org. Golly, it's all in the background right after our news. Rabbi Hagler says we'll meet some of the students who make this building so fun, so energetic, and so lively every single day. Can school, in fact, be fun, energetic, and lively? Rabbi Hagler, for, for years, has been saying yes when asked that question. He'll prove it again coming up right here at JM in the AM. Happy 50th to Bruria. Their golden anniversary is being celebrated. And how did they kick it off with us right here at JM in the AM? Gali Tzal, Israel Army Radio, 2 p.m. newscast next at JM in the AM. בניצן השעה שתיים, כאן רן יבנאי עם מה שקורה עכשיו. חקירת הרצח הכפול אמש ביישוב הבדואי אל פורה שבדרום, מהלך חשד למחדל במשטרת ערד. כעת מתברר שהאם התלוננה נגד האב יממה בלבד לפני ששתי בנותיהם נרצחו וטענותיה לא טופלו. בעקבות הגילוי הורה מפכ"ל המשטרה יוחנן דנינו להקים צוות חקירה מיוחד שיבחן את הטיפול בתלונת האם, כפי שהסביר דובר המשטרה תת ניצב אלון לבבי בתוכניתנו עושים צהריים עם יעל דן. לא נעשו פעולות בעניין, ואת זה בדיוק אנחנו עכשיו בודקים, אותה ועדה תבדוק מדוע לא נעשו דברים שאמורים לעשות באירוע שכזה, עם התראה כזאת לצורך העניין, עם דגלים אדומים שצריכים להיות מונפים. זה אירוע מאוד מאוד כואב, ואנחנו, אני בטוח שהארגון בעצם שם את הדברים באופן שקוף, ו, ואת האמת כולה אנחנו נביא לידיעת הציבור. 
כתבנו בדרום רמי שני מציין כי מספר קרובי משפחה נעצרו בחשד למעורבות ברצח הכפול, אבל האב שגופותיהן של שתי הילדות נמצאו בביתו טרם אותר. מוקדם יותר התייחס מפקד המחוז הדרומי של המשטרה יורם הלוי למסע ההרג בבנק בבאר שבע והודה ירי השוטרים לעבר הרוצח ובת הערובה לא היה מוצדק וסיכן את חיי האישה. הוא הוסיף, כלל לא ידענו שהרוצח מחזיק באבת ערובה. מסר כתבנו יותם ברגר. בג"ץ דן היום בבקשת המדינה להכשיר ארבעה מאחזים בלתי חוקיים בשטחים ובאופן חריג שלחה שגרירות ארצות הברית נציג לישיבה. תודה לכתבנו עידו בן בג'י. המדינה מבקשת להפוך ארבעה מאחזים להתנחלויות חוקיות וההחלטה מעוררת אי נחת בשגרירות ארצות הברית ששלחה לדיון את האחראי על נושא ההתנחלויות בשגרירות כדי לעקוב מקרוב. בין המאחזים שמבקשים להכשיר גם המאחז גבעת אסף שהוקם על קרקע פלסטינית פרטית וכעת טוענים תושביו שקנו את הקרקעות מדי בעלי הנציג אנדרו שוט סירב מצידו להגיב בתום הדיון וציין, אני כאן כמשקיף. חברת הוט ממשיכה לפטר מאות מעובדיה במטרה להעסיקה מיד מחדש בתור עובדי קבלן. כתבתנו רויטל איוב. 200 עובדי הוט בחיפה אולצו לעבור היום להעסקה עקיפה אחרי שלפני מספר חודשים פוטרו 133 עובדי החברה בנשר ונקלטו בחברות קבלן. לדברי העובדים, המהלך נועד למנוע מהם להתאגד ובכך לשמור על תנאי העסקתם. טקס ההתייחדות השנתי לזכר חללי סיירת שקד יתקיים אחרי הצהריים במצודת יואב. ותיקי היחידה ובני משפחות מוזמנים החל מהשעה שלוש וחצי. התחזית התחממות ולסיום עכשיו זה רשמי אוסקר גרסיה עוזב את קבוצת הכדורגל מכבי תל אביב. המועדון הודיע שהמאמן יפרוש אחרי עונה אחת בלבד עקב סיבות אישיות. כתבנו אביב כהן מעדכן כי ההליך לאיתור מחליף לגרסיה כבר החל ותאריך מדויק למינוי חדש. טרם נקבע. אלה החדשות שעורכת נעמה שוחט. JM in the AM, hour number two, as we celebrate Bruria High School's 50th anniversary. This is how the celebration kicks off with us here live at Bruria. Rabbi Hagler is going to introduce us in just a couple of minutes to some of the students who are here, who make this uh, amazing building. Fun, lively, and energetic every single day. That's what we're told. Hey, Shlomo Katz is live in concert tonight. Those of you who are in uh, Schenectady, New York, if you're up in Schenectady, New York, likely tuned in at 90.1 on the FM dial. Shlomo Katz is at the Proctor Theater, the annual Unity Celebration of Jerusalem, beginning at 8 p.m. tonight. For information, you can dial 518-346-6204, 518-346-6204. Rabbi Chaim Hagler is... Uh, Assistant or associate? Assistant. Assistant principal here at um, Berea High School. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Nice to reunite with you. Absolutely. All right. Uh, can we bring up some of the students to say sure, good morning can. to us this morning? Let's bring up the first two students that are here. You claim that it's a fun, energetic, and lively building every single day. That's your claim, Rabbi Hagler. That's correct. I would guess that if, in fact, it is fun, energetic, and lively, it's the students who are responsible for that because we know that it's not the staff who's responsible for that. That's true. That's true. <laughs> it is, it is these, not to take anything away from the staff, it is these students who are responsible for that. So we say hi today to uh, these young ladies who are in what grade? Do you know what grade they're in? Yes, we have ninth and 10th. Represented by the ninth and 10th graders. That's right. Young people on their way to academic stardom here at Berea High School. There are students who do go to academic stardom, correct? There, there are. are some who accomplish amazing oh, things. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, you have seniors who go on to amazing institutions, to incredible careers. Absolutely. We'd probably be here all day if we had to list the accomplishments of students who sure. went to Berea. If you want to see it's part of our open house, we have a, uh, a feature of where certain people are at this right. point in their lives. And very and impressive. It's ama- oh, it's very impressive. Very nice. Different, different types of uh, professions and uh, professionals and mothers and, and teachers and psychologists and et cetera. Amazing. Do these students know that they're on Ustream right now, being viewed by thousands around the world? I think they do. They do know that. Please introduce them to us. Okay. First up is Tamar Klein. Tamar, good morning. Good morning. How are things going? It's going good. How are Boy, you? Boy, it is fun, energetic, and lively <laughs> here. I like that. How is it that so early in the morning you're able to uh, project such an energetic demeanor? Well, I had, you know, an hour drive here to wake up, so... <laughs> 
I thought on the hour. I thought on the hour drive, the students who drive an hour here usually sleep in the uh, <laughs> van. That's not true. You actually wake up and usually, but you know, a little nervous. So you knew you'd be on the radio, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, who's listening today? Tell me. My typical question is, who are we giving a shout out to? Who's tuned in to hear you on the radio this morning? My family, you know, random people on the way to work. And they're proud, aren't they? You might yeah, kn- you might so. know her father, by the way. And who's that? Bruce Klein. Do I know Bruce? Not sure. I'm not sure. Okay. Sounds vaguely familiar. Not Send my that. best. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to wish Bruria High School a happy 50th? Of course. Happy you want to wish them a happy 50th Bruria. anniversary? <laughs> Can you imagine 50 years old? Is that amazing? Can't imagine it. You can't imagine. <laughs> Someone your age can't imagine anything no. being 50, huh? 50 seems very old it when you're that It certainly age. does, yeah. Wait a few years. All right, Rabbi Hagler, uh, is there somebody else here? Who's, yes. Uh, who's that? There is a Shira Fournier. Hi. By the way, morning. before she re- speaks, yeah. I have to mention that her mom, who's over there, yes. uh, I don't know if we pan the camera. Do we pan the camera? No, we don't pan. Right? We don't, we don't we take pan. risks. Okay. <laughs> um, but she's, uh, she, really, she really is responsible for running the school. She's uh, the front line, as you know, if you wish, uh, the person who's in the front office, who's the smiling face, who's the f- voice on the phone. So this is why it's fun, energetic, and live in the building. That's correct. Wow. Congratulations to you. Thank you for all you do for Bury High School. How long have you been here? Six years already. Boy, oh boy. Okay, and this is? Her daughter, Shira. Shira, good morning to you. Morning. I guess you don't have to give a shout out to your mom. We took care of that already, huh? Yeah. Anybody else you want to say hi to today? Um, I'll say hi to my class, 205. I don't know if anyone is listening they there, but be. I told them to. They're required to listen <laughs> today. I'm waking, if I'm waking up at 6 in the morning, they should be listening. I think my Orats will be fuming if he finds out they weren't <laughs> listening this morning. All right. Uh, do you want to wish Buria High School a happy 50th? Yes, I do. Happy 50th, Buria. And we should all be together for the 100th, right, Shira? Yes. We should all be together celebrating at the 100th anniversary. By the way, the election that you mentioned before. By the way, Adina so, just uh, mentioned to me that we're going to be doing JMNAM from the 100th anniversary celebration. Oh, That's what she good. said to me earlier today so we are already planning for 50 years from now <laughs> is that a little optimistic no that's great no <laughs> that i'm great. with you okay will i still be fun energetic and yes, live you with will. that i will yes you will <laughs> okay good at 156 <laughs> that's good to uh, know no it's not that not that <laughs> not that old, but not that old. yes you wanted to say Robert. Hagen. yeah um so i just wanted to say that we talk about the, the election you mentioned the election yes this morning so first of all for sure, those of you uh, who missed it earlier let me just interject for a moment it's election week it's campaign week there are signs everywhere. Right. Rabbi Hagler, thank God you're not voting. You wouldn't know who to vote That's for with true. all this. There's so That's much material. True. There's so many there's so many short resumes. I would walls. vote for all of them. Yeah, I don't know how you would do that. Mm. Maybe we'll get special permission from Rabbi Orat. You'd have no choice because that there it looks like there's a slate of candidates, all of whom are qualified for their positions. That's very true. And I mentioned Shira not to give her an advantage. Uh oh. Just that confusion. she's already currently on the on ah. the on the, on the uh, student council. So figured I could mention that she's on the student council and she's running for re-election. All right. So congratulations, and uh, Thank you. I don't want to show any favoritism, <laughs> but I hope the uh, the re-election campaign goes well, and uh, hope the uh, hope the campaign war chest is going nicely as well. <laughs> what is it? That's right. Yeah, you're exactly. You're, you're trying to side the election, Rabbi Hagler. I didn't want to accuse you, but now that Miriam Wallach brings it up, uh, we, we may be citing you for trying to swing the election one way or the other. We're not leaving here before getting Rabbi Hagler in trouble, that's for sure. All right, more coming up. Rabbi Oratz joins us next. We are celebrating Brewery's 50th. Guess what? It's their golden anniversary, everybody. June 3rd is the official start of the celebration. We're kicking it off today with us right here at JM in the AM.
Day, talk about fun and energetic. JM in the AM, good morning, everybody. We're live at Berea High School. 50 years of Berea, happy anniversary. One of the great things in Elizabeth is One Stop Kosher, and they are responsible for catering a delicious breakfast for everybody here this morning. One Stop Kosher Market has groceries, meat, fish, takeout, bakery items, fruits, and vegetables. We thank Pinchas Kassira, this morning's sponsor and uh, owner of uh, One Stop and Galat Star in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Next time you are in or through Elizabeth, you make sure to stop there and enjoy. On the 3rd of June, as we continue to remind our listeners, JEC celebrates its 73rd annual dinner. Educator of the Year is Mrs. Hani Moskowitz, culminating her 17 years of devoted leadership at the uh, RTMA helm as principal. The Leif Tov Award to Ephraim and Amy Basson. And uh, Breweria High School, that's right, the entire high school, the institution, they'll celebrate their golden anniversary that night. Breweria High School's 50th anniversary, Monday night, June the 3rd at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey. Everybody, alumna and, of course, friends of JEC and Breweria are encouraged to be there that evening, thejec.org. I've seen the list of the dinner committee. Many distinguished members of the community are coming out to uh, celebrate Berea's 50th. Go to thejec.org. The keynote speaker that night is Rabbi Chaim Wasserman. And uh, Rabbi Joseph Oratz is with us here in our makeshift studio in the ballroom of Berea High School. Rabbi Oratz's name has been synonymous with Berea for quite a while. He's the principal of Berea. Rabbi Oratz, welcome to JM in the AM. Good, mor- good morning, Nachum. How long have you been with Berea High School? Nachum, I am, thank God, <laughs> finishing my 31st year at Berea High School. It's unbelievable. Your name has been synonymous with this institution as long as I remember, and obviously I'm on the air for 30 years, so it's even beyond that. And uh, you have seen incredible growth. You've seen amazing expansion. You've seen uh, a 50th anniversary celebration that's not just you know, for the sake of celebrating 50 years and looking back at 50 great years. You're in the middle of a 50th anniversary celebration as the school is at the height of its accomplishments, as it's growing and and uh, and completely flourishing in this era. I have to tell you, this is the most exciting thing in the morning to be able to get up every single day of your life and love the fact that you can go to work because it's not work. It's a great place to be. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. I have great staff, great kids, um, great institution. It's just been absolutely uh, a, a great trip, and I look forward to, to taking it further. Most people would, um, would say that this is a typical question that I would ask, so hey, why not ask it? Uh, it's 30 years, or 31 in your case. What would you say in terms of the differences, in terms of the comparisons and comparisons and contrasts between 30 years ago in Berea and today? Well, first of all, the school has grown in size. I mean, that's that's no, the most the most obvious thing when you look at it. When I first came to the school, it was about half the size that it is today. But thank God, New Jersey, the, the greater New Jersey area, has grown, um, and we've been a, been a beneficiary of that, and hopefully helped New Jersey grow uh, in that way. 
Um, I think that with Mrs. Chaya Newman at the helm for the first 25 years that I was here, uh, she really steered um, this ship um, forward, both in terms of excellence in education um, and in terms of her mantra, which was making sure that we really took care of every single girl that came in and making sure that we they knew we cared about them. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, Rabbi Orath is here as we're celebrating Buria's 50th and uh, the big celebration June the 3rd. We officially kick off the golden anniversary this morning right here at JM in the AM. How has this school year been specifically? Uh, I know that you continue to attract students from way beyond this geographic area, right? People are coming in from a lot of different places. We have uh, girls from Florida, from Virginia, from Oh, we spoke about this during Chicago. our fundraiser. We actually met girls who are boarding in New Jersey. Right. At our uh, originally, or even still today, from way out of town. Right. We have a family that moved into town from South Africa. Right. We met that uh, lady. I remember. Right. Great. Just uh, listen. They looked up. They they they're looking for the for the right place for their daughters, and and they found out that this is an elite school, and and they wanted to come here. So and, it's a great uh, place. And, and back to my question about this year specifically. I'm sure it's another banner year, but what could you tell us specifically about this school year? Well, I have to tell you that uh, the the energy that has been generated this year in terms of as we move forward towards the dinner and the 50th anniversary celebration is, is really awesome. Um, and, you know, year in and year out, as I walk into the building um, and just just have to, uh, greeted by this incredible, incredible student body every, every single year, it's hard to, you know, to, to point to one thing because they're just great. A lot of I, creative energy in this place, huh? Um, I you know, I taught here at one time. Yes, I remember that. And I remember one thing about that experience. It was one course and just, you know, an hour a week for a few weeks. But, <laughs> but one of the things I remember is that there was a lot of creative energy in this building. When I first came here, Mrs. Newman, I was in charge of the programming, uh, which uh, Aliza Blumenthal takes care of now. And Mrs. Newman gave me a mandate. She said, there cannot be two weeks in a row that go by without something creative going on in this building. And that has continued to be the mandate um, as we move forward. Um, you know, we need to be learning on a daily basis. Obviously, classes have to go on and the, and the class levels have to be high, but there has to be some other energy going on because w when kids feel like there's something going on, then their classes become all, the, all that much better. All right. And uh, one of those keys, obviously, because we, we've been emphasizing the students and staff, but one of the keys is the faculty. You're able to find high quality people who, again, have this creative energy. Right. And uh, there are some announcements coming down the road about Ooh. some, I can't tell you them now. They're, they're not ready yet. We should expect them when in the next couple of Weeks? Uh, yes, I imagine so. About uh, additions to the school? About uh, some some uh, additions, not just to Berea High School, but to the Jewish Educational Center in general. Um, as we as we move forward, under as you'll hear a little bit later, under the leadership of the associate dean uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Tites, who's out there in the audience. Right. Good morning, Good morning, Rabbi Tites. Uh, and uh, there are some great things happening here, both uh, in terms of uh, faculty, in terms of of uh, administrative changes that have already taken place, as I'm sure you'll you'll be hearing about a little bit later. Uh, and some exciting uh, new courses that are that are coming up uh, that are going to be added to the school. Uh, the one that I can let out of the bag yeah. is that we are uh, starting, as they already started at RTMA, a uh, science and technology uh, arm of the, of the school, and we're looking forward to, to moving that forward. Keeping up with the times, huh? It's got to be there. Yeah, it's the only way to do it. Uh, next to you is Mrs. Shlomis uh, Pikus. And Mrs. Pikus is the daughter of Mrs. Newman, who you just mentioned. Mrs. Pikus, good morning to you. Good morning. And she serves as associate principal here at Breweria. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Um, I don't know how fair it is to, uh, to start a conversation with you talking about your mother, but <laughs> most people in my audience who've been listeners for quite a while know how fond I am of your mother and how her... Uh, uh, incredible leadership in Jewish education was something that even impacted me, believe it or not. I never went to Berea. <laughs> and, you know, but nonetheless, it had an effect. We hope, we hope you didn't go to Berea now. <laughs> it had an effect on a lot of lay leadership out there, you should know. It certainly did. But I always say I have four brothers and hundreds of sisters because Berea was <laughs> definitely a part of our family. Growing up, I mean, that was it. Uh, it was another child. She served here as principal for how many years? 37. Wow. No wonder she was able to make such an impact. The longevity is incredible. And uh, it's, you know, most people would say, oh, you know, a, a principal, a dedicated one, someone who was here a long time. You know, we understand we've seen other schools who've had that type of situation. But how do we pinpoint, for those who didn't know her, what she brought to the table, what it was that made her so special? Incredible energy, incredible creativity. She wasn't afraid to do something new, to do something innovative, um, essentially to move ahead of the pack. Um, I guess one word that comes to mind constantly 
constantly is innovation. She never rested on her laurels. As Rabbi Aris will tell you after every program, uh, she would sit with her staff and what could we do better when we do it next time? Nothing was ever just repeated. Everything was built upon and uh, that was how she continued. So to years. an extent, she was pretty demanding, which I guess you have to be in that position, right? Uh, Rabbi Aris? <laughs> would you yeah. agree, Rabbi Aris? Yes, absolutely. And that's very important, keeping everybody at the top of their game. That's right. That's it. Uh, and you mentioned in terms of innovation, uh, she's one of those people who got it in terms of uh, if there is something new or there is a new area to explore, go for it, as opposed to others who might uh, want to avoid it or question if it's a good idea. She wanted to use the latest and greatest to help enhance the education. Uh, she was a risk taker in a right. safe sort of way. She you know, would weigh the uh, benefit versus the risk, and if the benefit outweighed the risk and uh, the girls were interested and excited, it was worth taking a chance, and uh, she was right uh, so many times. Oh, no question about that. And the proof of all this is the reaction since she's gone, because you see how many people come forward and say that they were impacted, not just folks like me, but people in the world of education who, you know, who, who, who altered what they do because of her and adjusted to what they do now do because of her. We thought that we knew all the stories. We didn't begin to know the impact she had, uh, not just on her students, but on education in the United States and beyond. And through seven, 37 years, I guess, I, mean, I know you said thousands of sisters, but the number's got to be in the thousands, right? I mean, I'm obviously sure they are. A lot of proud uh, alums who, are, right. uh, who, look, who look back at her life uh, very, very fondly. Uh, Mrs. Shulamis, uh, Shulamis Pikus, rather, is the associate principal here at Berea. How about a word about today? Tell me what's happening in the school from your vantage point. Well, I do have to wish good luck the, uh, to those girls who are taking APs. We actually have oh three APs uh, that were scheduled originally for Pesach that are happening today. That sounds like fun. Uh, so, well, I don't know <laughs> if I'd agree with you on the fun part, but they're certainly well prepared and they're just waiting to put it behind them. Uh, there's always something happening here. You can tell it's election week. Yeah. Uh, it's very hard to get to your classroom on time because you stop to read and read and read the walls. For a guy my height, it's impossible to walk through the halls. They've got <laughs> signs hanging in every direction. But hey, may the, may the best person win as they finally go to the polls this coming uh, Friday here at Berea High School. Well, thank you to both of you. Thanks for welcoming us here today. Rabbi Oritz, Mrs. Pikus. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having us. A pleasure to be here as we celebrate Berea's 50th. We'll speak with more wonderful folks at Berea High School coming up here at JM in the AM. 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. Come on by, everybody, if you're in the Elizabeth area. Or I have another suggestion. Tune into your radio at 91.1 FM and all our affiliates or jmtheam.org. Or, believe it or not, we're on Ustream right now where you can see all the action. See me sitting here with Rabbi Oratz and Mrs. Pikus and talking about the last 50 years. Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nachum Siegel Net. Give me a like I 
I want to thank Miriam L. Wallach, who, if you're watching on Ustream, is the one taking the uh, photo of our music system. Why, well, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Miriam L. Wallach, our general manager of the Nahum Siegel Network, coordinated everything on our end, and I thank her. I want to thank ZK, who's engineering here, and Stan, who's engineering in our studio in Jersey City. And, of course, I want to thank David Netkin, uh, who is a jack-of-all-trades, but specifically today he's taking care of our Ustream video in addition to all of his coordination for today's show. Big thank you to Adina Abramoff, who uh, coordinated things on, our, on the Brewery High School side and reminds me, as we speak about, uh, as we did a minute ago, about Mrs. Newman and her 37 years that uh, she dedicated during her life to Brewery High School. There will be a special tribute to Mrs. Newman coming up at the dinner on the 3rd of June. We hope to be there celebrating with everybody at JC their 73rd annual dinner. And of course... Uh, that is the night that the uh, uh, the Berea High School is among the honorees uh, celebrating their 50th anniversary. If anybody would like to place a memorial ad in this special tribute section of the journal coming up on June the 3rd in memory of Mrs. Newman, no problem. Go to the website, j- thejec.org. All the dinner information is there, thejec.org, and you'll be able to... Um, uh, to uh, put in ads in general and, of course, to participate in the memorial tribute section to Mrs. Newman. Also, I am told that there was an advance video that was released uh, where legendary teachers, past and present legendary teachers of Ruria High School, declared that they will be at the dinner. And I would bet that this will encourage even more and more people in the JEC Brewery family to come on out and celebrate on June 3rd when they hear that folks like Rabbi Wasserman, Mrs. Jonas, Rebbits and Tights, Mrs. Winetsky, Mr. Glazer, Rabbi Parnas, Mrs. Young, Mrs. Weinstein, Rabbi Snow, Madam Captain, is that the right pronunciation? Mrs. Asher, Rabbi Oppenheimer, and Mrs. Kaisman are all committed to be there on June 3rd to celebrate with Berea High School. So you could join those of you who remember any of these names from all the years at Berea can join in and participate with them uh, that night at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey. We're live at Brewery. More guests, students, and staff coming up here at JM and the AM as we celebrate Brewery High School's 50th anniversary. But first, Rabbi David Goldwasser, his words, Echanish Masarov Zev and Rabbi Alevi. Here is Rabbi David Goldwasser with Morning Chizuk. Good morning. We read in Bamidbar, Yisa Hashem Ponove Lecha, may Hashem lift his countenance to you. The Talmud tells us in Kedushan, there isn't any reward for mitzvahs and good deeds in this world. The payment for mitzvahs performed in this world 
is deferred for Olam Haba or the world to come. The Ben Ishchai notes that Hashem fulfills every mitzvah in the Torah. The Torah explicitly commands that a person has to pay his worker at the end of the day. This being so, how then could Hashem defer a person's reward, his schar, for the mitzvahs that he fulfilled? The commentaries explain that we learn in the Shulchan Aruch, if one hires a worker through an intermediary, he's not obligated to pay the worker on the same day. The same, we could say, is when the Torah was given to Klal Yisrael. It was transmitted through Moshe Rabbeinu. Therefore, Hashem is not compelled to give the reward for mitzvahs on the same day or in this world. Our Chachom Imad, that the mitzvah emuna of faith is unique because one can receive reward for faith even in this world. The reason for this is because we were charged with this particular mitzvah in the first two commandments of the Asera Sadibros, or the Ten Commandments. Those were not given through an intermediary. Those were given directly by Hashem, uttered by Hashem, and were not transmitted through Moshe. There is no latitude with regard to payment for the mitzvah emuna. The reward for the fulfillment of that mitzvah has to be paid in this world. The Medrash Rabbah explains that Hashem shines His countenance upon Klal Yisrael in return for the words that were exchanged between Hashem and the Jewish nation. This refers to the first two mitzvahs that were spoken directly by Hashem and our Sinai without any intermediary. So great is the power of the mitzvah of Amunah. In truth, inherent in every mitzvah, there is an element of Amunah, of faith in Hashem. When a person puts on tefillin, there is Amuna. When a person lights Shabbos candles, there is Amuna. When one gives tzedakah, there is Amuna. No matter how many or how few mitzvahs that a person performs, he invokes his belief that Hashem created the entire world. With every mitzvah that a person does, he's entitled to a level of reward for his emuna, although of course the core of the mitzvah's reward is reserved for Olam Haba, the next world. The great Reb Nachman of Breslov once said, The headquarters of emuna is in the heart. It is our job to make sure that it spreads through all of our limbs. This has been Rabbi David Goldwasser bringing you morning chizik. Have a nice day. JM in the AM, live at Berea High School with plenty of special guests coming up in just a moment. Want to welcome Jay Booksbaum, who c- continues to be amazed at my wine acumen, how I've gained so much from him over the last few weeks. He didn't think I could gain more than I have in the last 20 years being associated with him, but the last couple of weeks, he is shocked at my knowledge, especially about white wines at this point. I have turned a major corner, so big thank you to Jay Booksbaum, who is here to say hi to us this morning. And the legendary Matis Wine guest, that's right, J.M. and the A.M.'s own Matis Wine guest, who claims to know Rabbi Tights for more than 20 years, is here. <laughs> is here. That's a, it's a little bit of a joke, only because in protection of both Matis and Rabbi Tights, I will not announce how long they know each other. Uh, <laughs> but they know each other quite a while, and Matis is here celebrating with us this morning as well. He has been a mainstay of this. Even when he wasn't in this community, he continued to be a mainstay of this community for a long, long time. JEC celebrates its 73rd annual dinner Monday night, the 3rd of June at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey. And now it is a pleasure to welcome our good friend, Rabbi Ami Newman, who's been a guest of ours before. And uh, in my opinion, one of the greats in the world of Jewish education. You know, I unabashedly... I proclaim this all the time. You're one of my favorites out there. He's Director of Student Activities and a Rebbe at RTMA, and he has some students with him this morning. Tell me how the school year is going so far. You know, it's it's been an amazing year, and it's coming down to an end. We have our annual trips going on next oh. week. So we have our ninth graders doing some chesed trips and some day trips. Our 10th uh, grade goes rafting. 11th grade is going to Niagara. Ooh. Our seniors next week are going to Orlando. Sounds adventurous. Yeah, it's a rough week of scuba diving. <laughs> and, you know, 
it's hard it's hard to do every if you want to be in school for a week this is the week huh? <laughs> this is the week it's a hard job somebody's got to do it are they busing to orlando or they're going to no, be jetting down no. there we have a uh, six o'clock flight on tuesday really yeah a couple of days down there a couple of days it's very humid be careful please <laughs> we'll try to uh, that's not the time ourselves. to be yeah. leaving new york for it's, weather purposes it's a hard week to go and and it's a lot of work but you know can you tell me uh, we, we speak about this so often but maybe because of your unique perspective on things you could tell me something i haven't heard before you mentioned the trips and all these extracurricular things that go on in certain schools. Can you pinpoint why it's so important off of the academic page to do all these things with the students? You know, everybody has different talents. And I think that besides the recreational and the fun and, and the kids and the bonding, that's a big part. Right. You know, a lot of the times the kids, depending on the classes, whether, you know, the style of the class, they don't really get the best opportunities to bond as a grade. Things like this, the color wars, the team building, the the hurricane cleanups, all these different things that get kids out of their normal routine. And they, they work with each other and they bond in that way. And then some of their technical abilities shine in different programs. And then um, some of their leadership qualities come out when they have to work on a program. When they, we, we don't have any, you know, we don't have waiters come with us. We have our students who help shop right. for the programs, they who help clean thing. up, who help set up, who barbecue. Who Did RTMA things. students, in fact, help with hurricane cleanup? Yeah, we have some of them who are here. And then our, our 11th and 12th grade, a lot of them who are in Elizabeth and who would be willing to wake up at <laughs> whatever hour it is that you people wake up every day. Um, and they actually have APs today. So it's hard to come in and daven and in. It sounds like fun. Yeah, the AP is also <laughs> really fun. It's part of our, our school sphere. <laughs> we call that the extracurricular or we call that academic? Our student activity <laughs> stays away from those things. Which is the most difficult AP? Those taking which test are the ones panicking the most usually, this morning? Usually the AP sciences. Oh. It's not this morning, but an AP bio, AP chem, AP... Those are the ones who get into a panic yeah, situation. Those are the, I was more of an AP like economics and a psychology. little lighter <laughs> yeah. easier yeah. to head no those are those are hard to those are hard to well do. we wish good luck to all those students i hope they do well and speaking of students why don't you introduce the uh, folks who are with us this morning so we'll start from the left bensi angle is here good morning sir morning how are things going at rtma i'm good it's good baruch hashem so i uh, do you have friends and relatives who are listening in this morning who, um, know that, who know that now you're officially a radio star? <laughs> I think so, yeah. It better be. Anyone <laughs> specific you want to say hi to today? Um, my grandfather, I guess, because he's probably up at this time. <laughs> yes, old people like us, they're up at this time of the morning. <laughs> and did you participate in any of this uh, hurricane relief during the school year? Um, I did. Where did you go? Uh, we went to somewhere near Sparta, New Jersey. Oh, I know where Sparta is, near Route 15. Yeah. And there was there was actually a, a cleanup necessary in that area? Um, yeah, there was actually a woman who I think couldn't really afford to demo her basement, which was totally flooded out. Wow. And the basement was just getting moldy, and we basically demoed it for her. Now, I will tell you that Sparta is probably not used to uh, seeing people in yarmulkes come to help people no, out. Because they, I don't even think they knew what... A, they probably did not know I who don't Jewish know people were. I if they knew were. what a Jew was. So it's not an area besides of New Jersey. Besides all the good rumors they hear on the news. Besides right. It's not, it's not an area of New Jersey that, that we'll see a lot of Orthodox Jews. That must have been quite a feeling, you know, bringing that kind of Kiddush Hashem over there. Well, good morning to you, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Who else do we have here, Rabbi Newman? Uh, this is Azriel Kimmel. Azriel, good morning to you. Good morning. Where are, are you from? Um, Hillside, New Jersey. Hillside, New Jersey. Oh, it's actually a newbie to Hillside. Mathis, remember our old days in Hillside, New Jersey? Those were the days. Oh, Hillside, New Jersey. Uh, Hillside is right between Newark and Elizabeth. Yeah, right. Yeah. I guess if you walk. So I that lived wall. right next to Hillside, but I was on the Newark border. Nice. Matis was in Elizabeth on the Hillside border from this end. Is this fascinating or what? <laughs> 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 Talking about getting an education by listening to JM and the AM. Who are you saying hi to today? Um, I think my parents hmm. and my grandparents are listening. Right All right, now. sounds like 50 50. We have a <laughs> shot that they're two did today. Yeah. What's been the highlight of your school year so far, aside from being on JM and the AM? Aside from being What's been the highlight here? It's at like a distant TV? number two. A distant we're number two. Um, what would it be? I would have to say one of the things I really enjoyed this year was the new SciTech program that JC instituted. Very nice. I just, it's like a class that you could go hands on and do work at the same time, but it doesn't feel like you're doing work because it's, it's very it's interesting and it's, stuff it's, like that. There's yeah. a lot of fun involved. Yeah. Very nice. We heard about the new program and it continues to expand. Part of staying uh, up with the times. Right. Hey, it's 2013 or my new oh, one. It's, it's 2013. It's like I could program something now. Like it's like that, like an engine. You picked up abilities that you didn't have before. C correct. Well, congratulations to you on that. And Rabbi Newman, who's our third student who we're saying hi we to? We actually have Ozzy's brother, Ranan. Ah, Ranan, good morning to you. 
Good morning. What's been the highlight of your year, sir? Uh, making the playoffs in the basketball team for the first time. Was this the furthest team uh, for this year? Did any th w All of our teams go far. This is just one example, of a shining example of our athletic department. So back to my question. Was, <laughs> <laughs> was this the team that went the furthest to the, in the playoffs? No, the hockey team. Oh, hockey did even JJV better. made it to the semifinals. Very nice. I see we're taking our hockey and basketball very seriously. We don't mess around with hockey and basketball. Very, remember those old days in the JEC gym? Well, we used to uh, come here on a Saturday night and watch the contest go on in the Yeshiva League. Boy, oh boy, time certainly has flown. Well, Rabbi Newman, continue success to you as Director of Student Activities and send our best regards, everybody, to RTMA. Will we see you at the dinner? You, I, will be, I, I will be there. Uh, that's our quote. I will be there. I hope to be there as well, and I look forward to seeing you there. Monday night, the 3rd of June, JEC celebrates its 73rd annual dinner. One of the honorees that night is Brewerya High School because their golden anniversary will be celebrated. Come on out. Support the uh, amazing work of Brewerya and JEC and enjoy what will be, no doubt, a phenomenal evening of reminiscence, of uh, reunion, and uh, just all-around great fun. Uh, information is very simple. Go to the web, thejec.org. Again, it's thejec.org, and you'll have an opportunity to um, uh, purchase... Uh, your res to, uh, to place your reservation and, of course, to uh, get your ads in as well. Big shout-out going out to One Stop Kosher, who provided breakfast for us this morning. The crowd here at Brewery High School continues to build. It's amazing. It's not like it was two hours ago when Rabbi Orat and myself were the only ones in the building, or practically speaking. ZK was already here. He beat me here. It's, uh, there are many, many more people who are visiting here, so, uh, here, us, here this morning. Uh, don't forget, you can watch all of this on Ustream, ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. You can actually watch the entire proceedings. More coming up, special guests, and plenty more between now and 9 a.m. If you keep it right here at JM in the a.m. <laughs>
That's Benny Friedman. Don't tell anybody who that is. Seems to be the hottest song around. Benny Friedman, Yesh Tikva, right here at JM in the AM. All right, June 3rd, everybody. Mark your calendars at the Venetian in Garfield, New Jersey, as JEC celebrates a 73rd annual dinner. And Berea High School that night will be uh, honored with a golden anniversary recognition for their incredible 50 years. That's right, Berea opened in the early 1960s, and here we are today in 2013 and we've been mentioning that there are other distinguished honorees that night and they include Mrs. Hani Moskowitz. Mrs. Moskowitz who has been a guest of ours many times on JM and the AM has dedicated 17 years of devoted leadership to RTMA. Uh, she is uh, being recognized as uh, educator of the year uh, for her years as RTMA principal. Mrs. Moskowitz, welcome back to JM and the AM. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. Didn't make you schlep to Jersey City today. This time we came to see you. <laughs> very much appreciated. We finally made it here. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> all right. So uh, first of all, I'm sure it's a humbling experience to be recognized for uh, the last 17 years. I guess this culminates an amazing career here. It certainly does. Um, I, but I do have to say that I really don't view this as a recognition of my 17 years. I think it's a recognition of 17 years of teamwork, of moving forward with an incredible faculty, with an incredible student body, and actually reshaping and redirecting our TMA and really facing the future and preparing for the future. I don't think that anybody can deny that RTMA uh, over the years has had some amazing eras. I think your tenure can be considered one of them, where they, uh, where they certainly, I mean, uh, certainly to people in the community, uh, it, it seems that it's had some uh, really good years recently. Well, thank you. I have to say that the community has been wonderful. The community has been warm and welcoming and they allowed me really to form bonds that and relationships that I will take with me, I think, wherever I go and for the rest of my life. And I appreciate the opportunity that I had here. Well, Mazel Tov to you, Educator of the Year, uh, uh, is bestowed upon you on June the 3rd, and we congratulate you on that. All right, tell me about this uh, current school year. How have things been going in uh, RTMA? Things have been going very well. You know, sometimes transition years can be a little bit scary, but this year and this transition has been going very, very smoothly. From the start, from the time really that um, we announced that I was going to be stepping back and a search committee was put into place, we all worked together to find a replacement who would represent the values of the school and who would be able to carry forward the positive things that were put into place over the last 17 years, um, as well as to bring his own spin. And we were very successful in doing that. We had a um, search committee comprised of parents from representing all of the different uh, communities that our students come from. And the parents on the committee were selected because they all um, really supported the mission of the school so that everybody was there to find somebody who would be a perfect replacement and uh, we believe we found one. And of course you're referring to Ray Peretz Hachbaum who's sitting to your left and we'll have a chance to speak with him and he's somebody we know for a long time and has an amazing reputation when it comes to Jewish education uh, especially in this area uh, meaning in this geographic area and we will speak to him coming up. What's your message 
to the seniors who are now graduating. I know you've done this, uh, you know, 16 times before <laughs> and try to send them off with, with something important to consider as they move on from RTMA. What would be the theme of what you would say to them this morning as they get set to complete their four years? To take with them everything that we've tried to instill in them as they move forward and to build on it. They had four years of Torah learning where Torah values were really instilled in them. The success of getting over 90% of our senior class to go to Eretz Yisrael for at least a year or two right. before they pursue career preparation or college preparation really is an indication of the success of our, of our program, of our teachers and our rabbeim who know that spirituality and Yiddishkeit are not uh, just ancillary to academic education, but an integral part of the, what we try to what we try to do and accomplish with our boys. And I think it's one of the things that people always cite in reference to the last, I don't know, 15, 20 years that there's been a, an amazing effort to make sure that their continuing education would be a quality one. And sure enough, thank God, your seniors will be enjoying that starting next year. Uh, well, we say Mazel Tov to you. Oh, by speaking of Mazel Tov, so I'm told that the students enjoyed yet uh, more awards in the area of science. Is that how it goes here? There has been um, a focus, a really, a really strong focus on science programming over the last few years, um, thanks to the um, Gris Foundation and to outside funding, as well as to the expertise of our own science people, Mr. Javit and Ken Dietz. Our boys have really um, been given opportunities to move forward and to explore new avenues in science. We have a um, science and technology elective this year for 10th graders. Um, this is the fourth year that our students participated in the Gildor International Science Competition. Right. For the last three years, our boys placed first in the United States and participated internationally. Last year, our boys came in first in the international competition. Boy, they must have some proud Jewish mothers. <laughs> yes. In addition, because again, we're looking to the sciences, the number of students who have actually um, opted to participate in the UMDNJ mini-med programs over the course of the year have, uh, has increased. And that gives the boys an opportunity really to explore careers in the health field, in the medical field, and to make some you know, important decisions before they actually leave high school so that they can choose electives that will prepare them for the path that perhaps they want to oh, follow. So we, so we might have some Jewish doctors down the road. I think so. To say the <laughs> least. Yeah, not unusual for our community, I guess. I think so. Well, Mrs. Moskowitz, I say mazal tov to you. Thank we'll you. see you on June 3rd. Congratulations as Educator of the Year, and uh, uh, congratulations on all the amazing uh, work you've done here with RTMA. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Rabbi Hachbaum to take your seat, and we'll introduce him as the brand new incoming RTMA principal, uh, who no doubt comes in with his uh, own vision of the future and uh, what will be happening uh, over the next few years here at RTMA. Right, Peretz Hachbaum, an old friend, and uh, like I said, somebody who's well-known in the area of Jewish education in this area. Uh, good morning to you. Welcome to JM in the AM. Uh, good morning, Nachum. How are you? Baruch Hashem. We've had the opportunity to speak about so many different things over the years, and this is uh, quite a distinction, the incoming RTMA principal. Do you agree with Mrs. Moskowitz that this transition has been on the smooth side? So the first thing I'll tell you is that I was told when I received the position, always agree with Mrs. Moskowitz. <laughs> And after 17 years of service to the school, it seems to be the wise thing for me to do. That's funny. Um, I, I got to tell you, the one thing Mrs. Moskowitz didn't say that I want to add is that the, the source of the smoothness, if you will, is Mrs. Moskowitz herself. It's sometimes difficult to come in you know, at the end of one school year, getting sure. ready for the next school year. Um, the symbiotic relationship that we've developed, the ability to work together in a very short period of time, has really made it very easy for me to step right in in the last month. And I want to thank Mrs. Moskowitz publicly for all of her help and guidance and, and direction in getting myself started in the new era uh, of the school. So thank God she's really been a pleasure to work with, as well as uh, the administrative team, Rabbi Tights, uh, uh, Rabbi Newman, Rabbi Sauber, Rabbi Rich and, uh, and, and Mr. Wise, so many people have been really very helpful in making me feel comfortable. You have a lot of good people here. Uh, Rabbi Hachbaum, I, essentially, as we get now toward the end of the year and graduation, the dinner, the celebration, etc., the transition, I guess, really uh, begins in earnest uh, uh, during the summer. What type of summer do you think you're going to have as you approach the next school year? Well, you know, Elizabeth is a beautiful area. I never knew. I didn't spend that much time here, but uh, I'm trying to figure out where I can best, you know, sun myself from the building. It's a... Uh, <laughs> 
Now, really, we have a thank God a a, a very uh, a very big agenda, very uh, uh, provocative agenda in terms of curricular ideas. Uh, after I finish talking to you this morning, I think I'm headed for a Chumash curriculum meeting. So we're starting to get right in, you know, roll up our sleeves and uh, and really get a sense of where we can make. In, you know, my challenge is to take a really good school, a phenomenal school, really, and make it even better still. So uh, it's a tough I, act to follow. I mean, you know that. I mean, I, so. I knew that coming right. in, but it's a, it's it's a big challenge. But I think it's going to be really. Uh, uh, really a, a great challenge for me professionally and personally to be able to uh, take the great things about JEC on the curricular level, on the programming level, and uh, you know just maybe put my little imprint on it here and there, working together with really, as I said, a, a tremendous team of leaders and a tremendous team of teachers um, in order to uh, you know really help the kids you know grow to that next step. This I'm not trying to pry. I'm just curious. Uh, no, no, you know, <laughs> I know you a long time. Nothing. You're always trying to I pry. Can, I can pry as much as <laughs> I want. You make your living prying. New <laughs> principal means necessarily a, a lot of new staff, or not necessarily. No, not necessarily. We have a great team, you know, and I I, I don't know the teachers that well yet. My expectation is, you know, being, given that they've worked for, for Hani Moskowitz and for Rabbi Tights, the answer is they're a great team, and they've put together a terrific group, and I'm looking forward to getting to know them and learning from them and, and seeing what they have to offer. Here and there, there are going to be some changes, and as I get to know everybody and we try and put some new programs in place, we'll make sure that the right people are in the right place. And I want to point out, we've spent a lot of time talking about teachers and administrators right. and the leadership team. It's about the kids. It's about the boys. And in my time, the three weeks or so that I've been here full time, um, these kids are unbelievable. And I'm spending time meeting with the kids and talking to them about what they love about the school, how they would like to see it be even better. And we want to take that input and implement it into our programming and into our strategy, uh, yeah. strategic planning. That's the way to do it. Uh, all right, Parrot Sachbaum is here. We asked for highlights of your uh of your uh, intentions, your agenda, the, the the future of RTMA. One of the things that we were told, and I have it in my notes, is a brand new Masmidim track. What would that mean for RTMA? Okay, so the Masmidim track is something which is really in the uh, percolator right now. It's something we're developing as a long-term vision for the school. The idea is really to go back to the roots of the school where years ago, as the school was developing under you know senior Rabbi Tais, the founder, right. Rav Pinchas Mayer, and the idea was that there was always a, a Masifta program, if you will, a, a, that, that more s kids who were spending a little bit more time involved in learning, how exactly it's going to develop and, 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 and it be implemented in the school is something that's still under consideration. Uh, Rabbi Tights and I, together with Rabbi Sauber, are doing a lot of talking about planning it. We're meeting with parents who are interested. And the truth of the matter is that uh, I, I feel having come in now, I want to kind of slow that down a little bit to get my hands around it, to get a real feel of how to make it most successful and uh, for the kids. And therefore, my, my guess is that we're going to really take the first year of my tenure to study what the possibilities are and to make it very clear to the community how we want to implement it and integrate it into our program. And in that way, ensure that it will be yet another exact excellent example of successful programming at, at the school. So right now, I think it's going to be uh, something that I want to study, something that I want to really evaluate and make sure that we implement it in the, in the right way. But by God, here's the idea. We want to give kids an opportunity to, in the same way you spoke about science and technology, and we're a school of excellence and a school that's really trying to achieve greatness in all the different things that we undertake. Similarly, we want to make sure that the learning is given opportunities, and those kids who want advanced opportunities in learning, additional hours of learning during the week, without taking away from their opportunities to excel in pre-college studies, in uh, extracurricular and co-curricular activities. But ours is a school that really, that Toru Madal place, where you can have outstanding Torah learning, high academic excellence and achievement in learning, tremendous hasmada in learning, and at the same time, without losing out on the extracurriculars, the co-curriculars, the sports teams, the academic opportunities, the social opportunities, as well as, of course, the academic pre-college opportunities that make a JEC, the RTMA, such a wonderful place to learn. It sounds like you want to grow every area as much as possible. As you admitted, it's going to be quite a challenge, but it sounds like you're off to a great start. Continued success as this journey just gets uh, 
uh, out of the starting gate, and uh, great having you on this morning. Nachum, it's a pleasure. I think last time I spoke to you was on the BQE, trying to get to your uh, <laughs> right. studio when I was stuck in traffic. <laughs> see, we came to visit you this time. Baruch Hashem, it's <laughs> great right, to par- see you. All right, Parat Tachbaum, uh, for the next school year, he will be known as the principal of RTMA here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. We meet Rabbi Tights and speak with more staff members and students coming up here at JM in the AM, 8.02 in the morning. And this is America's one and only Jewish Moments in the Morning Radio program. Heard and listeners sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 on the FM dial and around the world on the web, JM the AM. Dot org. If you're watching us on Ustream, you can, actually, if you want to watch us on Ustream, go to Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. Ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. And I'm told you can comment there on the Ustream page. And already, alumna from Israel who are reconnecting with uh, Breweria High School are commenting on the site as we speak during the program. More coming up. Keep it here at JM in the AM. <laughs> This is done by Sandy Shmueli. Big shout out and thank you to um, our friends at One Stop Kosher here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. One Stop and Glotstar um, specialize in catering for all occasions. Today's breakfast is among them, sponsored by Pinchas Kassirer, the owner of One Stop and Glotstar. Next time you're in this area, you make sure to say hi and go get some delicious food. Adina Abramoff is responsible for uh, everything on the uh, brewery end for today's show and having us here for the 50th anniversary celebration, and we thank her very, very much. I just saw Molly Rothstein. She's here for 23 years. She says she still hasn't graduated. I like her sense of humor. Um, so, Molly, good morning to you and to the Goodmans, because Molly knows the Goodmans very well up in Woodridge, New York. And Rabbi and Mrs. Goodman are among our favorite people, so I want to make sure to say Mazel Tov, or actually say good morning to them. Through the airwaves. And also, Dr. Hershorn, Dr. David Hershorn, uh, stopped by a minute ago. Uh, if Dr. Hershorn uh, was allowed to fundraise for JM and the AM, if he would put it on his agenda, we'd have a $20 million budget. Uh, but he has other things to do. I know, we got to, you got to speak to Dr. Hershorn because anybody who speaks about JM and the AM the way he does easily could swell our budget into the millions. He's one of the most amazing supporters, and I don't just mean financially. I'm talking about supporters, somebody who goes out there and talks about how vital this program is to the community. Dr. Hershorn informed me 
that Michal Hershorn is graduating Bruria High School on the 9th of June. So we say Mazal Tov to the Hershorn family. Rabbi Eliyahu Tait, who we know for quite a while, is Associate Dean and is getting ready for the big dinner on the 3rd of June and for the big celebration of Bruria at 50. Rabbi Eliyahu Tait, welcome back to JM in the AM. Thank you very much. It has been a while. It is great to reunite with you in this forum. Uh, and, and I said to you off the air that in fairness to the history of this amazing institution, and especially because we haven't touched on it yet, we have to go back 73 years or a little bit more, a little bit more. at this point. Uh, what year are you taking us back to? 1934. 1934. What happened in that year? Uh, my grandfather came to Elizabeth, got married, um, and uh, became the rabbi here. And that started a How quickly long. was JEC formed at that time? Was it within a couple of years that it was already a, a viable educational institution? 1941, it started officially. So a few years later. A few years later. And it actually picked up from something that my great-grandfather, my grandfather's father-in-law had started. Right. He had started a school here before, and financially, it didn't quite make it. And um, then when my grandfather came and kind of reestablished uh, the rabbinate here, right. um, he uh, started the school in 1941. My to father be, was sorry. one of the first 14 students. He was original, one of the first students. Original student of JEC. To be fair to the younger people listening this morning, they may not understand the impact that your grandfather first, then of course your father, but first your grandfather had in this community, and in general when it came to Torah education around this country, because your grandfather had uh, plenty of influence not just here, but in other because he traveled a lot early right. on in his career, yeah. and he knew how important Jewish education was for the right. future of our Jewish community. When JEC started, uh, I think there were seven other schools in the United States. That's it. That is it. That's it. There are more today, huh? <laughs> yeah, a few more. There are more in, like, just Union County now than there were back then in the United States. And in the early 60s, it was decided that a uh, Yeshiva Girls High School was needed. Well, uh, some of the uh, parents were a bit upset that the boys had a high school and the girls had to travel into New York. Right. And uh, one of them in particular, uh, their family name was Pinchus, um, they really pushed hard. And uh, what happened was uh, convinced some people that it was really a good move to make. And uh, two board members went and approached my grandfather at a board meeting and said, here's a D2 house. We put a down payment on it. There's your high school. Wow. And that was the house that was originally on this site. Right here. Right here. On this property. Yeah. Rabbi Eliyahu Taitz is with us, JM in the AM, live from Ruria High School. So celebrating 50 years, and you know you tend, to, uh, you tend to be nostalgic and talk about the early days, the glory years, etc. You are experiencing it now. This is not looking back and saying, oh, how great things were 20 or 30 years ago. You're in the midst of an amazing reputation amazing. at this Ruria High yes. School. Ruria really is uh, worldwide. It's known worldwide. You know, I say... You know, JEC, I said, you probably heard of Brewery. Oh, yeah, Brewery, of course, <laughs> Brewery. Yeah, so uh, RTMA is going to get there, too. They certainly will. <laughs> Absolutely. But it is amazing how uh, Brewery has made such an impact. One of the obvious things is that uh, you extended way beyond this geographic area. Yeah. You have students coming in from so many different places now. Yeah. So they're impacting their own communities. And it seems that, uh, and we mentioned this earlier in regard to the boys, it seems that in terms of continuing education, they are making an impact out there, your graduates. Yeah, they are. Um, the number of um, teachers and um, administrators in other schools that either came through Brewery as students or as teachers here is, is astounding. Just, you know, uh, we tried to find out and, uh, you know, just people out of nowhere saying, you know, oh, that teacher, that, that principal, she started off at Brewery as a teacher. This one started off as Brewery as a teacher. So it's good training grounds. Huh? Uh, absolutely. It's fantastic <laughs> training grounds. You know, Mrs. Newman really created a program here as uh, you know, Rabbi Arts and, and Mrs. Uh, Pike has said right. beforehand. She was really very forward thinking and uh, she really created an incredible program here, which Rabbi Arts has been carrying on. And, you know, now we're looking to the future, both here and at our RTMA, to see how we can leverage that to, to uh, even greater heights. How special is June 3rd going to be when, uh, the, when this institution is recognized for these 50 years? June 3rd is going to be an incredible, incredible evening. Um, the program is going to be fantastic. We interviewed so many different people for a short video I can imagine the video is going to be very touching. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's going to be really wonderful. Um, and uh, there was a, a separate uh, video done, I think it was by the students here, uh, you know, commemorating Mrs. Newman, and we're going to incorporate that in as well. Right. So because she was such a big part of what Bruria is, 
still. And um, you know, Mrs. Moskowitz, for her 17 years, she's really an incredible person. She's worked with so many other administrators. Uh, we've tried at different times to have like two principals and something with better success or lesser success. Mrs. Moskowitz has done it with uh, three different people and it's been incredible in each of those ways. And that's really a credit to her as a person and the, the way she works with people. Well, she certainly has had an amazing run here. And the yeah. Lev Tov Award Lev that Tov night? Lev Award. Uh, so the Bassins. The Bassins are really, really wonderful people. Um, the Lev Tov Award was envisioned as more of a community award, not mm -hmm. a school-specific award. Uh, Ify Bassin is the Gabai in the main shoal. Amy is involved in a lot of community things as well, but she also uh, runs our math enrichment program in the elementary school because we try to kind of, you know, at every level. Yeah, of course. Push and they'll the be recognized they that night. Exactly. Uh, information about the dinner, thejec.org. We hope to be there and celebrate with everybody at JEC. their 73rd annual dinner and the big tribute to Brewery is 50th. Again, it's June the 3rd. Go to thejec.org. Reservations and uh, journal ads, etc. all available there. It's easy to do uh, right there online. So you have a lot of great, uh, a lot of great things happening here. A uh, big transition as we discussed earlier, but right. it seems that things are really uh, going in the right Running direction. Very smoothly. It's been really a very smooth transition and that's a credit again to Mrs. Moskowitz and Rabbi Hachbaum that they've really been working so well together. It's uh, portends for a really, really wonderful future. When was this building completed to the point that it looks the way it does now? This um, was how many years ago? That right, uh, So the building that we're in right now, the ballroom building right. was built in Completed in 1972, right before my bar mitzvah. All right. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> Revealing secrets. Right? That's it. Yeah. So Mattis and I have known each other for about many years. Um, and uh, the new building, I think, was completed uh, just over 10 years ago. Is it already 10 years? Yeah. Oh, wow. I was going to say Incredible. like five years. Yeah, already now. 10 years. My gosh. 10 years. Time flies, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, Rabbi Taitz, a mazel tov to you. We'll see you on the 3rd of June. Bezrat Hashem. Congratulations Looking on everything forward. that continues to uh, happen here. Fantastic, thanks. Great seeing you, Rabbi Eliyahu Taitz, uh, Associate Dean, and uh, welcoming us here this morning for Brewery at 50, and of course, in commemoration of everything happening at the Jewish Educational Center. JM and the AM, more coming up if you keep it here at 91.1 FM, 90.1 FM in the Catskills on the web, jmandtheam.org. Don't forget, you can watch all of the proceedings on Ustream. It's very simple. All you got to do is go to uh, ustream.tv slash channel slash Nahum Siegel Net. And if you do all that, you'll be able to uh, see what's happening here. Plus, you could actually comment on what's going on. That's right. You could actually comment on what's going on, and everybody out there who, uh, ha who who's able to access Ustream, you uh, go ahead and uh, you'll be able to watch me and my guests this morning. We're here until 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Don't forget, we have a full slate of incredible programming all day long on the stream at jmnam.org, including Essie's Weig, and a brand new music, Z-Report Live Lunch, coming up at 12 noon today, all on the stream at jmnam.org. <laughs>